Good morning, everybody. I'm just looking at those beautiful flowers. Aren't they gorgeous? Really cheer you up. Oh, yeah, I'm okay. I'll just stay here. As long as you come back. <laughs> okay, so a uh, couple of things happening in the next few weeks. So this afternoon we've got the Love Remembered service at 3 o'clock. Next Sunday is Remembrance Sunday, and that's followed by the curry lunch. And then we need the items for the raffle and the tombola stalls to come in. Please do donations for that, for the church fair. I really would like to um, be getting those in in the next week, if that's a possibility, those of you that would like to donate. And I've got three birthdays. I don't... I, Linda, Linda Alderman, is, her birthday's on Thursday. Debbie, Hunt, Friday. Hayden? No, okay then. As they're not here, we won't sing happy birthday to, to them. Unless there's somebody here today who's got a birthday. To, oh, good. <laughs> oh, Betty! It's your birthday. So good, we've got somebody to sing happy birthday to then. So it's happy birthday, God bless. it when the service is sort of free and easy and and things can go wrong and nobody takes offense that always feels a great start so I believe we're going to have the call to worship on the screen wonderful if you would respond with the words in bold in time honored tradition from the rising of the Sun till it's setting in the West God's holy name be praised from the lips of children and infants, God's holy name be praised. In the visions of the old and the dreams of the young, God's holy name be praised. In the banquet hall of heaven and the forgotten corners of our hearts, God's holy name be praised. Let all that has life and breath praise the Lord. Amen. We praise the Lord. And we're going to continue to praise the Lord as we sing our first hymn, Let All the World in Every Corner Sing.
the teachers of the law goes up to Jesus and asks him, what's the most important commandment? And Jesus says, well, he gives, them, he gives him two, actually, but he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength. And then he adds another one in, which is you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But that first one is one that is so important in Judaism that it is actually made into a prayer that people say twice a day. And I just thought about how it is that we pass on to young people the things we want them to remember. And one of the ways is by repetition. Now, I am not convinced whether this is meant to be a hamster or a guinea pig, but it has quite a cool little thing that it does. So I just wondered if any of the children here are brave enough to come up. And if you do, you'll find it will make you smile and laugh. You haven't got to do anything awful. You're like, yeah, come on up, come on up. No? No, that was all a, a, a false alarm. Otherwise, you're going to have to ask one of the grown-ups, and they won't be half as much fun. So... Uh, are you a volunteer? A volunteer is worth 10 pressed men. Okay, so what I'll tell you about this... Oh, you've got one! You've got one! How unlikely is... Honestly, can I just hold yours up? How likely is that? I mean, honestly, I have never seen another one. That is amazing. Well, we won't get them talking to each other because that's going to confuse everyone. So... What this amazing... Do you think yours is a hamster or a guinea pig? I call it a hamster. Hamster. We're going with hamster. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on in a moment, and I'm going to... Who looks like that? Graham won't mind. Graham, I want you to say something quite short and simple to it. Nothing too long. Don't start giving the whole, you know, Ten Commandments. <laughs> but just one sentence, okay? Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Yes. Hello, how are you? So, let me just stop. When we laugh, it also tries to repeat our laugh. So, I'm not saying don't laugh, I just need to remember to turn it off. Okay, um, I feel like I'm picking on the guys here. Right, Andy, I want you to say something to this. God bless you all. <laughs> okay, did anybody, when they were at school, have um, rules. Okay, right. One rule. Somebody put your hand up. One rule that you had. No, you know, teacher here, she would know. Yeah, okay. Let's see if this can repeat your rule. No running in school. No running in school. Okay, right. Now, I know the children didn't want to come up, but maybe if I go down... Natalie, will it freak them out, or will they be willing to just say something? <laughs> no? Oh, come on, you don't have to go forward. Do you want to just say something, like, you can tell it your name. How about that? You could ask it what its name is. Right, let me turn it on. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> What's your name? Okay. Wonderful. Right. I cannot believe you've got one. That is just so incredible. <laughs> we probably don't use hamsters to pass on the things we want people to remember. But we have ways, don't we? So one of the things I was just asking was about school rules. Um, no running, that's always a good one. Anyone else remember another rule that they had in school? Put your hands up. Yeah, you didn't do it though, did you? Oh, now well, that's better. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody over there. Oh, right. Gosh, that's when I know you're younger than me. <laughs> we didn't have rules like that because we nobody had piercings then. But now, yeah, Eunice, be quiet, please. Be quiet, please. Yes. We had, we had strange things, like you had to go up the left-hand side of the stairs and, you know, keep to the left on the stairs. Go on, put your... No short skirts, yes. Did it have to be down to the knee? Did you ever get the teacher make you kneel to make sure it's... Yes. Yeah. Okay. Anybody old school in the sense that you had to stand up if a teacher came in the classroom? Yeah. 
do any of you youngsters have to do that now? No? No, it's a, I mean, I'm not saying it was a, a particularly important thing. We, we have rules that we live by, don't we? But, as we will think about later, if I said to you, you've got ten rules to live by, you'd probably go, that's okay, I can remember ten. If I said you've got 613 on top of those, you'd be a little bit like, well, there's no chance. So, the other thing I'm just going to ask is, how easy did you find it to remember your school rules? Or if you're in school still, how easy is it? Quite easy. How easy was it to keep them? <laughs> okay, that's another matter, isn't it? Well, we are going to think a little bit more about why there would have been laws and rules and what was important to remember and to keep. But this is... I'm hoping this is going to work. I didn't let the um, music group know this, and I'm going to really need you in a minute. But you all know the tune of London's Burning, don't you? Okay. Well, I thought one good way to remember what Jesus said to the teacher of the law was to sing it. And uh, because we've got to remember the order it comes in, it's heart, soul, mind, strength. Okay? So I'm going to sing it through once, and then I'm going to get you to sing it. And if you do well, <laughs> I thought we might try it as a round. What do you reckon, Martin? Okay, all right. Can you play it without having had any warning? It's impressive, isn't it? Okay, I better wait to see what key sets it in. Okay, yeah, that sounds fine. Yeah, that's fine, yeah. You, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind, all your strength. Love your neighbor, love your neighbor. You shall, let's give them a chance, okay. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind, all your strength. Love your neighbor, love your neighbor. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind, all your strength. Love your neighbor, love your neighbor. Oh, very good. Right. Right, so, should we do it in just two or should we try for three? Three. Well, no, let, let, we'll try for, for three. So, um, that's going to be an interesting no we'll just do it we'll, we'll be fine I know we're small in number so this side you're going to help this side which is really almost half the church which is a bit of an unfair advantage so maybe those in line with Eunice you could be the second group and those in line with Paul and Kelly we can all be over here the third group doesn't really matter just join in where you feel best led so we're going to start and then we'll come in I'm never quite sure when I meant to come in Great. you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, all your strength. Love your neighbor, love your neighbor. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and all your mind, and all your strength, all your strength. Love your neighbor, love your neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think you did very well. I think you did very well. It's trying to listen to what other people are doing at the same time. And I feel this side you have the advantage of our lovely singing group. This side you have the dubious advantage of fact I've got a microphone. So those in this section, you did really well to keep going. So... Hopefully, when you go home today 
and somebody says, what did you learn in church? You're going to go, I learned that I should love the Lord my God with all my heart and all my soul and all my mind and all my strength and love my neighbor. And if you've learned that, you need no more. Let's worship God with a, a prayer of adoration. Let us pray. Glory, glory, glory. Declare God's glory among the nations. Loving God, we declare your glory in this place now. As the light illuminates the vivid flowers behind me before you, we glory in the brilliance of the world. Praise to you for the variety and beauty of everyday things. Praise to you for your love expressed in Jesus Christ. Praise to you when our minds glimpse new insights of faith. Praise to you when our words run out and your glory fills our souls. Gracious God, we praise you for who you are. Let us glorify you and love you forever. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing again now. Jesus is King. Thank you. is going to bring us our um, reading from Hebrews. Thank you, Eunice. This may be different to what you know because it's a modern day version. Lovely. New covenant. But Christ has appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come. In the greater, the more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is not 
of this creation. He entered the most holy place once for all time, not by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. Having obtained eternal redemption, for if the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a young cow sprinkling those who are defiled, sanctify for the gratification of the flesh. How much more all the blood of Christ, who through the, the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, cleansing our, one, our conscience from dead, from, from dead works, so that we can serve the living God. Therefore, be, he is the mediator of a, of a new covenant, so that those who are called might receive the promise of the eternal tabernacle because of death has taken place, redemption from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. Thank you. Thank you, Eunice. We come to our prayer of confession now. Let us pray. This is what the Lord asks of us, only this, that we act justly, love tenderly, and walk humbly with our God. For the times we have failed to act justly, we ask your forgiveness and mercy. For the times we have failed to love tenderly, we ask your forgiveness and mercy. For the times we have failed to walk humbly with you, we ask your forgiveness and mercy. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on eagles' wings. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Hear the Lord's word of hope to us. Our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. We're going to sing again. It's a lovely, more modern hymn, but beautiful, beautiful words. How deep the Father's love for us. Thank you. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond Dying breath has brought me life. 
Our second reading this morning is from Mark 12, 28 to 34. <coughs> one, of the fo- one of the scribes approached when he heard them debating and saw that Jesus answered them. Well, he asked him, which command is the most important of all? Jesus answered, the most important is, listen here, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with your strength. The second is, love your neighbor as yourself. There, there is no other command greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have correctly said that he is one and there is no one that except him. And to love him with all your heart, with all your, <clears throat> with all your heart, with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. And is far more important than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to question him any longer. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Eunice. We talked before about rules and laws, and I know that you're all very aware that there are Ten Commandments. I won't ask you if you can remember them all, um, mainly because I think I'd probably get caught out myself. There's going to be one, isn't there, that you'll go after, and say, oh, that's the one I forgot. But I think, on the whole, we have a really good chance of remembering Ten Commandments. They were known as the Mosaic Law because they came from God through Moses. But these other laws I spoke about, the 613, they were known as the Pharisaic Law, or actually they were called the Mitzvot in Hebrew. And they weren't originally intended to trip people up. They were meant to be a way of covering all sorts of scenarios that might make it difficult for you to keep one of the Ten Commandments. So they would be looking for ways that people, if they did this, that would help. So um, off the top of my head, if you weren't allowed to work on the Sabbath day, then you needed to, if you needed to get somewhere, you had to have a way of doing that without breaking the commandment. And so these laws would come into place that would allow people to go a certain distance. And then they would mark that as a place that was okay. And then maybe they could carry on for the next bit of the journey. But as you can imagine, having lots of laws like that just got confusing for people. And it made it very hard for them to keep them. And although the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were supposed to help people, 
Sometimes you've got the impression they're a bit like uh, traffic wardens, just going around looking to see who's broken the laws, who's broken the rules, and reprimanding them. So when that teacher of the law came to Jesus to ask him what was the greatest commandment, it wasn't because he didn't know. Of course he did. It was to test Jesus. And Jesus gave him the one that is from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. And he said, this is the most important commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. It didn't have mind in that. Um, Mark put that into his gospel. And in fact, those words form the opening to a prayer that the Jewish people would say twice a day, still do, the Shema. And anybody here a Hebrew scholar? Nick, you don't, do you know Hebrew? Um, Okay, that's fine. Um, I'll introduce you to Nick afterwards. Okay, so what I'm saying really is um, I'm hoping that nobody here knows and can't correct my pronunciation, but you can afterwards over coffee. And it goes like this. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, which means hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one which is then followed with, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength. And every Jewish man and woman had to know that, and they had to teach it to their children from infancy. It was so important. It was the focus of your day. And they would have it written on tiny bits of parchment that they would roll into a little... Um, scroll, which the men would then have tied into their hair, you know, with the ringlets, it would go into their hair, and they would put them into something called phylacteries, which they would put either side of the doors, so that going in and out of the house, they were reminded of this first and most important um, commandment. But what Jesus does is actually very neat, because he adds one other law, is not one of the Ten Commandments. It comes from some laws that are there to teach people how they should live. It comes from Leviticus 19.18. And it was that law about loving your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said those two laws together sum up the whole of the Jewish law. If you do these two things, you will keep everything. And I suspect that you have heard that phrase, love God and do as you like. Have you heard that before? Um, it sounds like a real get out, doesn't it? Oh, love God, you can do anything you like. But the point is that if we love God with the whole of our being, what we do is seek to please him, to do what he would want us to do. So we wouldn't love God and then go and rob our neighbor because that's, in, that's just going to defy that very first statement. And in a way, that's what Jesus is saying. Do this, love God with everything and then love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus was always challenging through his words and his actions and he challenged a lot of these um, Pharisaic laws, this uh, mitzvot, because he did things that, whilst they didn't break the Ten Commandments, they broke some of those laws, like healing on the Sabbath, or encouraging his disciples to pick and eat um, corn on the Sabbath. But actually, when we hear that reading from Hebrews, we discover that Jesus didn't just challenge through what he said and did. He challenged those laws simply by being Jesus, by his death and by his resurrection. Now, I don't know about you, but the style of writing in Hebrews isn't always the easiest to access, which is why I asked for it to be read from a more modern version. But let's just quickly look at what that passage was saying because it starts by declaring that Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one of God. And that reminds us that Jesus wasn't just any ordinary man. It refers to him as a high priest, and that's interesting. 
because in his lifetime, Jesus wasn't a priest. He was called rabbi, which of course is the title given to a teacher. But the priests were always taken from the tribe of Levi, and Jesus wasn't a Levite. So he wasn't a priest, and he most certainly wasn't the high priest. In fact, scripture tells us that at the time of Jesus' death, Caiaphas was the high priest. But I want you to just think a little bit ahead for a few moments. Um, I can't, I, last time I was here, I had actually remembered how many days there were to Christmas. I can't remember how many it is now, but it's 50-something. So just imagine we were in Advent and we're approaching Christmas and we have the usual nativity scene and then quite often, incorrectly, we have the wise men. They actually came along quite a bit later. But we put them in our nativity scenes. So easy question. Please let the young ones answer this. How many gifts did the wise men bring? Young ones, honestly. I suppose it depends what you call young. Yeah, three, absolutely. And extra bonus points, what were they? Perfect. Perfect. What did the gold represent? Why was Jesus presented with gold? Or oh, thought some was putting kingship. Wonderful. Why was he presented with myrrh? Burial. Burial, suffering. Yeah, thank you. Why was he given frankincense? Priesthood. Oh, you're on a roll this morning. Well done. Absolutely. It was a foreshadowing of all that Jesus would be. And indeed, following his death and resurrection, he becomes a high priest for us. In fact, in the Anglican Church, they still do, most, well, I don't know about every Sunday, I don't know, but burn incense. Incense comes from frankincense. It can be made from other things, but that's where it derives from, as a reminder of priesthood. So, Jesus came, and as God's son, all people had to do was to believe in him, and then he would be their high priest in heaven, interceding. But that wasn't all that he had to do, because for that to happen, Jesus first had to become a sacrifice for us and for our sins. And... Prior to that, the priests had offered sacrifices in order to um, propitiate, good word, isn't it, for, for people's sins and for their own. But when Jesus came, he was the once and for all sacrifice. So since he came, there is no need now to sacrifice animals. There is no need for an outpouring of blood because his blood did it all for us. And when we have communions, we will do shortly, we actually remember that in our communion service because prior to Jesus, what they had was the, what is now called the old covenant. But when Jesus came, he brought in the new covenant through the shedding of his blood. And that means that any person, whether Jewish or Gentile, man, woman or child, free person or slave, as it says in that passage, who wishes to know God as Father and to have God's own Son intercede for them before God on the throne has only to believe in Jesus and call him Lord, which is quite a wow thing, really, isn't it? But, there's always a but, if our faith, is to be worthy of the name of Jesus, then we should do more than just talk the talk. We need to walk the walk as well. So when Jesus told the teacher of the law that that second commandment was as important, he said it for a reason, namely that we should love our neighbors as ourselves. So we have got to act. Words are great. Words are wonderful. We are meant to share our faith but we share it in word and in deed. We don't do it to earn brownie points, to make, sort of earn our own way into heaven. That isn't possible. It is a gift of grace. But we do it in response to the great love that has been shown to us. 
So I want to conclude with those words of Jesus because I want us to take them away in our hearts and in our minds and in our whole lives that the greatest commandment for each one of us is this, to love the Lord our God with all our hearts and all our souls and all our mind and all our strength and to love our neighbours as ourselves. How will you follow those commandments this week? Amen. We come now to our intercessions, and Natalie, you're going to lead us in those, I believe. Good morning. So my prayers for today um, have been inspired by the reading that Sharon has just spoken about. (laughs) Um, It's always good to hear it again, as Sharon said. So in Mark 12, 30, it says, So where Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. So my prayers of intercession will be about our hearts, our souls, our minds, and our strength. Heavenly Father, as we think of your great love for us, the saying of loving someone to death holds true with our precious Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, that you are our mediator, which connects us to our Father by the sacrifice of the Son and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we live in a world where true love is lost. The world says love isn't enough. Extra things are piled on top of love, but we know that love conquers all. And we ask you, Lord, for soft hearts, soft hearts of your true love to shine in us and through us as we permeate to those around us that they will feel your presence. Help us to be ambassadors of you and trust that as we follow you in our hearts, we will carry out your plans and purposes whilst here on this planet. We thank you, Lord, for High Cross and the love in this family. May we continue to always have a heart of openness in this community. We ask that you bless all the activities here, all the staff, all the volunteers, that they are blessed as they bless others. Father, you place within our souls what our passions are. Encourage us to be unique, to be different, to flourish in our personalities. We ask you, Lord, that you will place on our hearts so that we can truly live with soul and passion using the gifts and talents that you've given us. Father, we look, look at so many changes within the new government in this country. We pray for our minds. We pray for the minds of those leaders of this country to have clarity and vision. We pray for the leaders to have clear minds as they manage the new government and help us, Lord, to be mindful as we carry out our lives to make sure that we set aside time for mental health to pray for those who struggle with mental health and to remind us that you are a source of comfort even though the battle is there in the mind sometimes. You are faithful to help us overcome. You are our refuge, our hiding place. Draw us to seek you in that battle and stand firm under your wings. Lord, we lift up the people of Spain affected by the flooding and the level of torrential rain. Our prayers go out to the families, the emergency services, the support resources. We just can't believe the devastation. And we ask that you give the military strength to help the people of Valencia. Give Spain a strength of unity to support one another. And we pray for the recovery of that nation. Draw other countries to give support in any way that they can. And we pray for those who have lost loved ones. We can't understand it, but we ask that you shower your strength by your spirit to get them through this difficult time. Father, we know that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Give us a heart which enables us to speak with grace and compassion to love thy neighbor. We know that we can be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Lord, give us the mind of Christ and set our mind on heavenly things. Lord, we know that we gain and save our souls when we lose all to you. Help us to submit and cleave to you. And Lord, we know that we can't do anything without you, but we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. 
Remind us, Lord, that in our weakness we are strong in you and that the joy of our Lord is our strength. So please, Lord, help us to choose happiness. We desire a life of worship, to love you with all our hearts, mind, soul, and our strength. And we lift these prayers up in Jesus' name as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us, us not into temptation, but, but deliver us, us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Natalie. We're going to sing our communion hymn now. Here is bread, here is wine. <gasps> And I invite you at the end of that to stay standing if you're able to as we share the peace with one another. Thank you. Sue and Don, do you want to come up as well?
Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I leave you my peace, my peace I give to you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please feel free to turn and share the peace with those nearest you. Peace of the Lord be with 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 you. Sorry, do you want me to come over a bit? No, it's fine. Okay. As I always say, don't forget, you can carry on sharing the peace after the service over coffee. So there is no restriction. Please be seated. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, most true and living God. Endless is your mercy and eternal is your reign. All creation rejoices in your radiant splendor. You sent your Son to be our Saviour, to proclaim your kingdom in word and deed, and to be obedient even unto death on a cross. Through his resurrection, he overcame sin and death to set the whole creation free. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the choirs of heaven, we join in the unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise you, Father, that on the night before he died, Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, This cup is God's new covenant, sealed with my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Drink from it, all of you, in remembrance of me. Therefore, gracious God, with this bread and this cup, we remember our Lord's death and resurrection, and we look for his coming in glory. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send your Holy Spirit, we pray, that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of Christ, and that we may live to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The bread we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. Christ is the bread of life. The cup we take is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Christ is the true vine. And so we will bring to you the bread and the wine to take and eat and drink in remembrance of what he has done for us.
shall come back up. <laughs> the body of Christ given for you. 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 Given for you, the body of Christ given for you, and the body of Christ given for me. The blood of Christ. 
shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for both of you. And the blood of Christ shed for me. Amen. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. So we say together, we thank you, Lord, that you have fed us with this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all your people. Amen. So we sing our final hymn, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken.
going to finish with a blessing that I ask you to join in with as we go along. I know you're thinking, well, I don't know the words. That's fine. We'll do them as we go along. It's with some signs that comes the love of God flowing free, the love of God flow out through me, and then it's the peace of God, and then it's the life of God. So let's, let's give it a go. The love of God flowing free, the love of God flow out through me. The peace of God flowing free, the peace of God flow out through me. And the life, that's life. The life of God flowing free, the life of God flow out through me. Amen. Martin. Thank you, John. Good to see you. It's good. It looks more like Roland and Ross. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Like no, no, definitely. <laughs> definitely. It's only got a little tail, you see. I just can't believe somebody else not only has one, but happened to bring it today. I will get one free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They didn't print one out for her, so she had to do it from her own Bible. She was missing the um, one, so yeah, it shouldn't have been that. Yeah, yeah. The office, no, no, that's why. So it was, um, uh, uh, it, there was no zitra in the office this week because it was half term, so things didn't quite happen as they should. Well done, thank you. Um, your best bet would be to enrol in um, a, um, a beginner's course. Um, yeah, but you, that would take a really long time to say something. So yes, 
There are some. I'll see if I can see any around and let you know. Oh, lovely. Okay. Thank you, Sharon. Not at all. Good That's to see you. Spot. Oh, good. Glad about that. Thank you. So you stayed for a double? Oh. In the morning. Lovely to see you. Hello. I'm lovely to see you. I didn't know whether to drag you up to the front and introduce you. <laughs> well, I did think uh, if I'd spotted you before the service, but I was so focused on getting the um, microphone. And I spotted you as I was doing the call to worship, and I thought, I wonder if I ought to be calling you up at the end. But then when you said, I'm, I'm on, you know, because you're actually on sabbatical, aren't you now? Yeah. Uh, but you're going to stop for a coffee? Oh, well, we can introduce you to a few people then, yeah. Yeah, that Yeah, no, I gathered that. Somebody knows you from work. Yeah. Oh, did she? Well, I want to. I know. Oh, I'm not going to even I don't know the other name. Jill. Jill. I can't believe you should call it, right? The melody for the mind people would love oh, that. They would, definitely. They would. The other thing is that you say two things, it's just so it's got